If you find yourself around a campfire this summer, there's a good chance that someone is going to try to start a sing-along of Don McLean's American Pie. Pie, American Pie. Originally released in 1971, the song quickly became a cultural relic thanks to its combination of catchy hooks and enigmatic lyrics. Though McLean himself has been reluctant to come out with the song's meaning, it's been the subject of many discussions ever since its release. And many of these analyses have come to the same conclusion. The song is about a crossroads in the history of American society, culture, and perhaps most of all, music. Let's take a closer look. The first verse of American Pie contains the clearest reference and one that serves to give us direction for the rest of the song, The Day the Music Died. I can't remember if I cried when I read about his widowed bride, but something touched me deep inside the day the music Died. On February 3rd, 1959, a plane went down near Clear Lake, Iowa. The passengers of that plane were rock and roll icons, Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, and the Big Bopper. At the time, people called the incident the day the music died, and many worried that it would be the death of rock and roll as a movement. The song's narrator recalls this black day and breaks into the chorus, a lament for the innocence lost by that plane crash. So bye bye Miss American Pie, drove my Chevy to the levee, but the levee was dry. And then good old boys were drinking whiskey and rye, singing this'll be the day that I die. The chorus is a nostalgia for the time before Buddy Holly died, a nostalgia for America of the 1950s. It's laden with American symbols, mentioning Chevrolets and rye whiskey, and of course, the titular Miss American Pie. The symbol of Miss American Pie is a callback to idyllic images of America in the 1950s, with dreams and memories of fresh-baked pies and pin-up models. These images plunge us into the second verse, bathed in nostalgia for a more innocent time. Did you write the book of love and do you have faith in God above? If the Bible tells you so. The narrator sings of faith in God and dancing to rock and roll at wholesome high school sock halls. Well, I know that you're in love with him cause I saw you dancing in the gym. You both kicked off your shoes. Man, I dig those rhythm and blues. This verse features references to a pair of 1950s hit songs, too. The Monotone's Book of Love and Marty Robbins' A White Sport Coat and a Pink Carnation. And while this image may seem perfect on the surface, tensions were boiling beneath. At this time, many Americans were disenfranchised by institutional racism and sexism, while America as a country had a shifting role on the global stage. Musically, people were becoming less conservative too, and rock and roll was far from dead. We see that as the next verse jumps us a decade ahead to 1969. Now for 10 Gone are the simple days of high school dances and the Bible, replaced with complex, archetypal figures and power struggles that show the evolution of music over the next decade. When the jester sang for the king and queen in a coat he borrowed from James Dean and a voice that came from you and me. The figure that dominates this verse is the jester, who many take to represent oh, Bob Dylan. On the cover of 1963's The Freewheelin' Bob Dylan, Dylan wears a leather jacket reminiscent of James Dean and Rebel Without a Cause. But Dylan was a shift away from Dean. He was a rebel with a cause. As McLean puts it, he sang with the voice of the people, singing protest songs for the youth and the disenfranchised. In doing so, he became the face of American music, stealing that crown from the king, Elvis Presley. While the king was looking down, the jester stole his 
thorny crown The courtroom was adjourned This line features biblical allegory too. It's a crown of thorns, like the one Jesus wore, and it weighs heavy on Dylan. The rest of the verse pans out the music scene building up to 1969, with John Lennon getting into left-wing politics and rock moving into darker, more introspective territory. And while Lennon read a book on Marx, the quartet practiced in the park, and we sang dirges in the dark. Here we cut back to the nostalgic chorus before diving face first into the disarray of the late 1960s. Help the skelter in the summer swelter, the birds flew off with a fallout shelter, eight miles high and falling fast. Helter Skelter is a reference to the Manson murders of 1969, in which Charles Manson believed the Beatles song contained hidden messages. For some, this was a dark end to a hippie movement that had seemed so promising and optimistic. The rest of the fourth verse deals with that very movement, looking at the way people were trying to push forward music and thought at this time. The jester is once again Dylan, who got criticized for his electric shift in 1965 and then got in a motorcycle crash a year later. This nearly ended his life, taking him out of the music scene for a time, on the sidelines, in a cast. Undeterred, bands like the Beatles drove music forward with albums like Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, referenced clearly here. Now the halftime air was sweet perfume while the sergeants played a marching tune. We all But the sergeants aren't just a reference to the Beatles. The word also carries double meaning with militaristic connotations. In the mid-60s, America was knee-deep in the Vietnam War, which would last almost another decade. And that war revealed a lot about America, changing the country's perception on the world stage and bringing out tensions on the home front. At the end of the verse, McLean talks about how Buddy Holly's plane crash factored in. His death revealed the grime and disarray beneath the slick surface of 50s America. Do you recall what was revealed today? The music died. The fifth verse brings us to the incident that inspired American Pie, the Altamont Speedway Free Festival. Two years after the roaring success of Woodstock, another free concert was planned, an attempt to recapture that hippie magic. Headlined by the Rolling Stones, the concert turned out to be a disaster. The massive crowd became drunken and disorderly, as did the Hells Angels who were hired for security. By the time the Stones took the stage at sundown, it was chaos and a man named Meredith Hunter was stabbed to death after pulling a revolver in the crowd. The fifth verse captures all of this in beautifully symbolic language. It references the Rolling Stones song Jumpin' Jack Flash while playing up the biblical imagery that has driven the song. Come on, Jack, be nimble, Jack, be quick. Jack Flash sat on a candlestick cause fire is the devil's only friend. One of the altercations during the show happened while the Stones were playing Sympathy for the Devil, something that McLean parallels with his lyrics about Satan. The Altamont concert could be seen as a living representation of American culture, a chaotic dark end to a decade that kicked off with so much optimism. The sixth verse of the song deals with the fallout of this, with a musical shift from an upbeat jam to a slow, sad lament. I met a girl who sang the blues, and I asked her for some happy news, but she just smiled and turned away. 
The girl who sang the blues could be Janis Joplin in a reference to the deaths of rock greats like Joplin, Jim Morrison, and Jimi Hendrix that signaled the end of the decade in an echo of the day the music died. The verse ends on a last biblical reference, which some have taken to reference the assassinations of Martin Luther King, John F. Kennedy, and Robert Kennedy. However, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost could also be Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, and the Big Bopper. And the three men I admire most, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, they caught the last train for the coast, the day, the music died. And this brings us to one final nostalgic chorus. It may seem like a call for a return to the days of Miss American Pie, but I don't necessarily think that's the case. The song acknowledges that the idyllic 50s were an illusion, and that illusion came crashing down the day the music died. And while there was conflict and tension, and many lives lost throughout the 60s, it was also a decade defined by change and progress, and of course some of the greatest music ever made. It was a turning point for American culture that still has impacts today as we sit at another historical crux. And that's why American Pie is such a beloved song. When you break out the guitar and try to sing it at that campfire, you're tapping into a deep history of music, politics, and social change. And you're joining yourself up as another thread in the great web of music history. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching. If you want to help support my channel and you want to help protect your internet browsing, head over to nordvpn.com polyphonic and enter the offer code polyphonic. If you enter that code, you'll be able to use Nord's seamless VPN system to protect your internet and secure your browsing for less than a few bucks a month. And again, thank you so much for watching, subscribing, liking, all of that good stuff. You guys are awesome.